Hey everybody, this is Joe slash FoozleCC, and today I'm going to be talking to you about four things. The first thing is I'm going to give you an update on the top-down twin-stick shooter Smash, which is a game that I had been working pretty hard on and then I had to put on the shelf. Um, good news is, is I'm picking it back up, sort of. Uh, second thing I'm going to talk about is how I'm going to infuse not only the wave function collapse that I talked about in my last video, but also 3D into this new variant of the game. Third update I'm going to talk about is some performance challenges and how I got around improving performance and enabling myself to do that. And then fourth is I've been experimenting with effects on 3D models and they're pretty cool and I was surprised that they worked as well as they did uh, given that Construct is inherently a, a, a 2D engine. And along the way I'm actually really interested if you guys have any comments down below on ideas of where I can take this new kind of mechanic of wave function collapse for how it can influence the game loop. I have some ideas, but um, would love to hear your input. Okay, so let's go with item number one, Smash. Okay, so Zed and I from, you know, Zed from Let's Talk Game Design, we both had to put it on the shelf. We were busy with life and things just came up. So um, it's been kind of dusty for a while. And after doing the Wave Function Collapse video last time, somebody even made the comment like, hey, it would be cool if you shared an example with real art. I mean, whether it was pixel art or something else, right? That, that would be cool. I mean, instead of these black and white tiles. And I thought, you know what? It'd be really cool to try this out in Smash. And then one thing led to another, and I started playing with Smash again and trying to make this work. And I was like, I kind of got the bug again. Like, you know what? I kind of want to work on this. Zed is still busy. So at this point, I'm, I'm kind of going solo. Uh, maybe he'll jump back in at some point, but I'm going to go kind of a new direction with Smash and get myself excited about it again so I can pick it up and try to finish it because there's still a lot of underlying systems that I put a lot of work into, and I'd love to see it actually make its way into a finished game. So let's go on now to item number two. And for that, I really think we need to jump on over to Construct 3, and let's take a look at that. Okay, so reminder, this is what I made in the last video, which was really, really cool. It's an implementation of a you know wave function collapse that's leveraging an existing JavaScript library. And I already shared uh, the link to an example file in the last video and explained how it works. And it's taking rules that are set up around each of these tiles and it's generating a world. And I just have it kind of simply continuing to expand. But what's also kind of cool is I can, I can delete these tiles and it will refill in the void while still following the rules. And I was like, ah, this would be really cool to have like this twin stick environment that I'm running around and I can destroy things and then also have it regenerate. And maybe that even influences the gameplay somehow. It's like, I, I just have to figure out how to make this work. So uh, I got to work on making it work inside of Smash. And this is where we got. So let's go ahead and hit play here. Um, there's definitely a bunch of systems that broke with me doing this. So kind of uh, ignore this, but take a look at this. I've got 3D models inside of Smash. And guess what? I can destroy them. <laughs> and it's super satisfying. And guess what? If I destroy the whole tile, all oh, the floor collapses. And uh, every once in a while, you'll actually see that uh, this map is actually going to regenerate itself. I think I just have it like once every 10 seconds or so. And look at that. Oh yeah, it regenerated. Isn't that awesome? And this is super crunchy and I love how it feels and how it's looking right now. I'm definitely experimenting with the visual aesthetics and how I want this thing to look and feel. But I, I love how this is, you know, interactable now and how I can destroy things and have it regenerate on the fly. I just think it's really, really cool. So. How did I do this? Okay, so now we're back on item two. I had to introduce 3D and marry that to the tiles. So if you take a look here, these tiles, right? These are, if you watched the previous video, you'll recognize these. This is, you know, the, the building blocks that made up the wave function collapse. But what I did was I effectively turned these into prefabs. And each of these prefabs, they have children, which are 3D models that I've set up here so that you can think of each of these almost as like a three by three grid. You know, you have empty spaces, you have wall tiles, and you have filled tiles. And what I did was, inside of Blender, I created the necessary building blocks. And I made them each 3D objects inside of Construct 3. So this is like an example of a wall. And I'm obviously going to need floors and everything else. So I made all my building block pieces. I associated them into these tiles. And I'm like, okay, great. Now all I got to do, right, is just loop through the tile map and drop these in well that, that kind of how it works but there's a few more things you kind of had to do the first thing i decided was i actually took some inspiration from um some conversations on my discord to uh, have this 
uh, create prefab block idea where I actually store um, a prefab in a dictionary with the UID, like this is the UID of the prefab. And what I'm able to do that for is actually makes the 3D object more efficient because it allows you to load from a prefab so that you can not have to reload that memory. And it actually saves, um, you know, it doesn't cause some uh, frame, frame rate drop uh, from, from having to do that. It's just a more efficient way of using this prefab. In the be beginning of the game, I kind of call this and I create all my prefabs that I know I'm going to need. And then I also have a function that for me, this was useful that I call called update prefab tiles data. I decided that I wanted to store like the information about the prefabs inside of a JSON object. And for me, what I do is in the beginning of the game, I loop through all of the prefab tiles. There's 28 of them, so zero to 27. I loop through all of them and I store it all inside of a JSON object and I document each of the 3D models relative to the prefab, what their X and Y offset, Z elevation, X, Y, Z angle. And this is useful because then inside of Construct 3, I can manipulate these, I can change it. And I know the models are hidden right now, but it kind of looks like, like this when it's not hidden. I'll give you an example. And I can update this. And then inside, when I start the game, it will capture the latest information. And I can use that when I'm spawning them as the player explores. So these are all the kind of things I had to do to get this working. It's like, all right, great, I've got my 3D models, but I still had a few different performance hiccups. Um, as I was creating and destroying my objects, uh, there'd occasionally be like a little bit of a hiccup from frame rate. And so I decided, you know what, I'm gonna implement um, an object pool. In an object pool, this is like, we're going on to item three now. How do I improve performance with this many 3D objects inside of my game and creating and destroying? Was rather than creating and destroying, I'm going to acquire an object and I'm going to remove an object from the pool uh, or I'm going to add it back into the pool so that instead of creating something on the fly, I'm going to acquire it. I'm going to take from the pool and then rather than destroying something, I'm going to put it back in the pool, right? So inside of this class that I created called object pool, I've got add, remove, acquire and create object. And the general idea is that when I need to get a new tile, whether I'm exploring to a new area and I need to populate that before it's on the screen or I'm regenerating the map and putting tiles back down, I'm going to acquire from the pool and it, only if it doesn't exist already, I'm going to create that object, only then. So what does that look like inside of the event sheet? Well, when I come in here and I need to create my, my tiles, I actually have this um, section where I call set 3D object UID to functions.pool acquire object and I input the type that I need. And that gives me back the UID of my object from the pool. And I can then, you know, use that to pick the correct object from the family. So here's an example of this in practice. If I open up the debug, you'll see here, here are all my 3D models. Um, rather than being created and destroyed uh, every single time, yeah, let's go find them. Of course, I'm spawned in like a big open area on my map. Here's some examples. Um, rather than uh, creating and destroying each time, it's actually pulling from that pool. And right now, kind of ignore those empty cells. I'm, I'm just kind of, you know, playing with how I'm timing the regen and everything. But you can see down in this, oh, I'm kind of in the way. <laughs> These numbers aren't changing as I destroy and create. I'm acquiring and I'm reusing and I'm putting them back in the pool. So as I regenerate, I'm not having a hiccup from having to create and destroy those 3D objects. And even with the prefab, which definitely helps quite a bit, um, and using that feature of the 3D object, having a pool has helped me in my instance of perform improving my performance. So now I'm gonna talk about the fourth item, which is effects. Now, I didn't expect these effects to work as well as they do on the 3D object. Um, if you come over here, let me scroll down to where I'm kind of managing some of these. I actually played with a bunch of effects. I played with shatter, which I'll show you in a second, scale, um, which is just like growing and shrinking, uh, which obviously isn't that much of an effect, but glow and out, glow outline and dissolve. These are actually, all three of these effects um, are from uh, Kind Eye uh, slash, um, Kind Eye Games uh, slash McCall. And he has, uh, if I go to his itch page, he's the one who actually makes the 3D object plugin, but he also has all these effects. Um, I'll put his itch page in the description. Go ahead and check him out. Um, here's the shatter. I think it might be included in the effects for construct package, which is what I was just looking at. So go ahead and take a look at these. Um, I'm also using some 3D lighting uh, just 
for awareness from him, uh, which has been really, really cool. Now, Shatter, I was kind of really excited to use, and I actually had um, some fun incorporating this into the game. Look at that, that's pretty cool. Uh, for when the when the when when I would destroy the environment. But for some reason in my current project, I'm seeing a few artifacts, and I'm talking with McCall about it. Maybe we'll be able to get it resolved. Um, but I'm really happy with the current aesthetic of using uh, mostly just glow outline. Now, Dissolve is kind of interesting. I'm gonna show a clip uh, from a previous recording showing resolve, Dissolve um, right now. And it actually had this really, really cool look. Um, but ultimately, I was I was happy with glow outline. And I'll go ahead and, and play that again. And so what I'm doing is I'm kicking off all these tweens on translating and rotating the object. Uh, you know, you can see the 3D object kind of explode away based off the angle of the projectile. And it's kind of growing in scale. It's changing, you know, the magnitude of the glow outline. So as I hit it once, you see it glow a little bit and then it gets a little bit stronger until ultimately, you know, it explodes. And I'm, you know, each of these kind of have like a health variable. I don't know if I'm gonna keep, I kind of like it having a little bit of resistance to it. And so that way, maybe uh, if you get a power up buff, it kind of just like one shots everything. It'll be super satisfying, but I don't know. Uh, I'm really, really pleased with how these effects are looking. And I am using the shatter effect. You can see on these tiles um, as they fall away. So what happens currently in the mechanic is, is if you blow away all the objects on top of the tile, uh, it will actually collapse. And maybe in the future, this can be like a trap. So all these guys will just like fall into the void and it'll be awesome. Anyways, this is kind of where I'm at. And now I have to think about what how I'm going to incorporate this into the game loop. I, I know that this is kind of satisfying and fun, but now I need to kind of gamify it a little bit and make it satisfying with some progression and everything else. So if you have any ideas, please drop them down in the description. I'm oh, sorry, please drop them down in the comment section down below. And then last thing is I'm actually thinking about rotating uh, the tile so that's more of an isometric feel. Uh, view. So let me know in the description whether or not you think that's going to be worth it. It's going to take a little bit of effort. So right now I'm kind of in that tile map square, you know, plane. But what if I were to rotate this 45 degrees uh, so that you had more of a traditional isometric uh, type of view going on inside of this world? All right, everybody. Well, that's all I have for today. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribe down below. And uh, thanks again for McCall and all the awesome effects that he's created in addition to the 3D object and the support he's provided uh, in troubleshooting my implementation of them. Hope you guys found this useful and uh, can use it for inspiration for your own projects and trying to experiment with 3D inside of Construct 3. With that, everybody, have a good one.